Hello everyone and welcome to our continuing lecture on the political globalization as part of the curriculum in the contemporary world. A woman once asked U.S. President Benjamin Franklin about the Constitutional Convention. Sir, what have you given us? President Franklin's response was, a republic, ma'am, if you can keep it. Most Americans believed that the government system of their country is democracy and not a republic. But essentially, there is a difference between these two. An important, and it is important to know, that the to know the political system of it. By the way, a frame Joshua Flores has a good insight on political system in SoundCloud channel. Check him out. Many have been led to believe that the political spectrum of places groups such as communists on the far left, fascists or dictators on the far right, and political moderates or centrists in the middle. In the middle. However, a more accurate political spectrum will be to show that a country can have a government with no power on the far right against having 100% power on the far left. At the extreme right, there is, there is zero government. The extreme left has total government, which may fall under fascism, communism, socialism, among others. Such distribution spreads confusion that people move toward the middle of the political spectrum, or what we call a type of government which should limit to its proper role of protecting the rights of the people and follow what is stated in the Constitution. In your social science subject, you probably have heard of different types of governments. There is monarchy, dictatorship, which is rule of one, oligarchy, which is the rule of a few, or ruled by few, democracy, which is, which is a rule by majority, anarchy, which is a rule by no one, and republic, which is a rule by law. Both monarchy or dictatorship don't really exist in the practical sense, because there is always a group that puts one of its members up front. For example, King or, king or queen has uh, her council of nobles and every dictator has his bureaucrats or commissars. For Queen Elizabeth of England, she may have influence but she has no government power. This isn't ruled by one. Uh, even though one person may be the visible leader, it's always ruled by a group. There was a time that ancient people thought having no government might be a good idea or we call this anarchy. But it was a mistake. The ancient Greeks have said it that without law, there can be no freedom. The founding fathers of democracy have agreed that some amount of government is a necessary force in any civilized and orderly society. A government which is ruled by a group is the most common form of government which exists until today. Most of the nations of the world are ruled by powerful few and therefore oligarchy remains at the, at the other end. The word democracy comes from two Greek words, demos meaning people and kratos meaning to rule. Therefore, democracy means the rule of the people or majority rule. This of course sounds good, but for example, the majority decides to take away one's home or business or children. Obviously, there has to be a limit. The disadvantage in democracy is that the majority isn't restrained if more than half of the people can be persuaded to want something in a democracy. What about republic? The word comes from the Latin word res publica, meaning public thing. A true republic is one with a government, and it is limited by law, leaving the people alone. The Americans could have wanted to set up an oligarchy. In fact, there were some who wanted George Washington to be their king, but the Founding Fathers knew history and they chose to give the rule of law in a republic, not the rule of a majority in a democracy. For example, there are 25 of you in the class who wanted to remove your class treasurer after having accused of stealing the sinking fund. In a democracy, the 25 students succeeded and the class treasurer is kicked out. But in a republic, a class advisor steps in and says, you can't just remove a class treasurer without giving the treasurer a fair trial or due process based on the class policies and rules and regulations. Therefore, the rights of the government are not subject to majority rule, but to the law. This is the essence of a republic. Solon was a Greek politician 
He was considered as the first innovative lawmaker that set the ground for the creation of democracy, the governmental system that made the Greeks powerful and granted the city its fame all over the, the centuries. He urged a fixed body law and not just subject to majority whims. But the Greeks did not adopt Solon's wise counsel. The Romans did. Based on what they know about Solon's laws, they created the Twelve Tables, the first legal code of the Roman Republic, drafted between 451 and 450 before Common Era to help resolve conflict between wealthy partitions or wealthy patricians and common plebeians. These laws established rights and responsibilities of Roman citizens in areas of property, trials, personal, personal wrongs, public and religious matters, thus became the Republic. The Twelve Tables is similar to the present Constitution of America. In fact, or in effect, the Romans built the Republic and left the people all by themselves. Since the people are left to produce on their own, with the understanding that they keep the fruits of their labor, Roman or Rome became wealthy and the envy of the world. However, the Roman people forgot what freedom entailed. They forgot that the essence of freedom is the proper limitation of government. When government power grows, the freedom of the people decreases. Once the Romans dropped their guard, power-hungry politicians began to exceed the powers granted them in the Roman constitution. Some learned that they could elect politi politicians who would use government power to take property from, from some and give it to others. Agriculture subsidies were introduced, followed by housing and welfare programs, and taxes rose and controls over private sectors were imposed. Soon, a number of Rome's producers uh, could no longer make uh, ends meet. Productivity declined and there, was, and there were shortages. Unruly people, or mobs, began to roam the streets and demanded from the government. Others traded freedom for security, and eventually the whole republic went down. Rome went from a republic to a democracy and ended up with an oligarchy under the progression of the Caesars. This only shows that democracy was not a stable form of government. Instead, it is a gradual transition from limited government to the unlimited rule of an oligarchy or rule of the field. If we look at our very own government system, the Philippines is a republic with a presidential form of government, wherein power is equally divided among its three branches, executive, legislative, and judicial. The government seeks to act in the best interest of its citizens through this system of check and balance. Legislation belongs to Congress, execution to the executive, and settlement of legal disputes or disagreements to the to judicial. The legislative branch is authorized to make laws or repeal them through the power vested in the Philippine Congress. This institution is divided into the Senate and the House of the Representatives. The legislative branch confirms or rejects presidential appointments and has the authority to declare war. This branch includes the Congress. When we talk about the Congress, it has the Senate and the House of Representatives and several agencies that provide support services to Congress. The Senate is composed of 24 senators who are elected by the qualified voters of the Philippines. The House of Representatives is composed of about 250 members elected from legislative districts in the provinces, cities, and municipalities, and representatives elected through a party list system of registered national, regional, and sectoral parties or organizations. The party list representatives shall constitute 20% of the total number of the representatives, including those under the party list, for three consecutive terms after, ratif after the, the ratification of this constitution, one half of the seats allocated to party list representatives shall be filled, as provided, provided by law, by selection or election from the labor, peasant, urban poor, indigenous cultural communities, women, youth, and such other sectors as may be provided by law, except the religious sector. The executive branch is composed of the president and the vice president who are elected by, the, by direct popular vote and serve a term of six years. 
the constitution grants the president's authority to appoint his um, cabinet. These, uh, these departments form a large portion of the country's bureaucracy. The executive branch carries out and enforces laws. It includes the president, vice president, the cabinet, executive departments, independent agencies, boards, commissions, and committees. The president leads the country. He or she is the head of the state, leader of the national government, and commander-in-chief of all armed forces of the Philippines. The president serves a six-year term and cannot be re-elected. The vice president supports the president. If the president is unable to serve, the vice president becomes president. He or she also serves a six-year term. Cabinet members serve as advisors to the president. They include the vice president and heads of the, of the executive departments. Cabinet members are nominated by the president and must be confirmed by the commission of appointments. The judicial branch holds the power to settle controversies involving rights that are legally demandable and enforceable. This branch determines whether or not there has been a grave abuse of discretion amounting to lack or excess of jurisdiction on the part and instrumentality of the government that is made up of the Supreme Court and the lower courts. The judicial branch interprets and the meaning of laws, it applies laws to individual cases, and decides if laws violate the Constitution. Judicial powers shall be vested in one Supreme Court and in such lower courts as may be established by law. Each branch of government can change acts of the other branches as follows. Number one, the president can veto laws passed by Congress. By veto, we mean the constitutional right to reject a decision or proposal made by a lawmaking body. Number two, Congress confirms or rejects the president's appointments and can remove the president from office in exceptional circumstances. Impeachment of the president can be done if he or she commits treason, graft and corruption, and betrayal of public trust. Number three, the justices of the Supreme Court who can overturn unconstitutional laws are appointed by the president. The constitution expresses, expressly grants the Supreme Court the power of judicial review as the power to declare a treaty, international or executive agreement, laws, presidential decree, proclamation, order, instruction, ordinance, or regulation, and constitutional. Our very own government system has rich history in terms of political systems. From 1565 to 1821, the Philippines was indirectly governed by the, by the King of Spain through Mexico. When Mexico gained independence from Spain, we were governed under the Spain. The goal of Spain was to bring Catholic religion to the New World. Spain was also able to use the church government for political purposes. Under Spain, the government, the government which was established in the Philippines was centralized in terms of structure and national in scope. Remember that the reason why Philippines was easily colonized was the absence of a central government and lack of unity among people. Here, barangays were consolidated into town, each headed by a gubernadorcillo, and towns into provinces headed by governor, who represented the governor general in the province. We also have the Katipunan government during the revolutionary period against the Spanish colonization. Katipunan was a secret society in 1896 organized by Andres Bonifacio. The Katipunan was replaced by another government headed by General Emilio Aguinaldo as president, who was elected in the Tajeros Convention in 1897. This resulted in the Biak Nabato Republic established by General Aguinaldo. He declared that the aim of the revolution was, to, was the separation of the Philippines from the Spanish monarchy and their formation into, a, an, into an independent state. Following the outbreak of Spanish-American War in 1898, General Aguinaldo, in view of the chaotic conditions of the country, established the dictatorial government. The highest achievement of this dictatorial government was the Philippine Independence Declaration on June 12, 1898, and the reorganization of the local governments. The next stage in the political development of the Filipinos was the establishment of the Commonwealth Government of the Philippines. Pursuant to an act of the United States Congress in 1934, commonly known as the Tidy McDuffie Law, the law provided for a transition period of 10 years during which the Philippines Commonwealth 
would, op would operate and at the expiration of said period on the 4th of July, 1896, the independence of the Philippines would be proclaimed and established. The new government of the Commonwealth of the Philippines, deemed successor to the government of the Philippines, was inaugurated in 1935, following the first national elections under the, 100, under the 1935 Constitution. Manuel Quezon and Sergio Ismenia were elected as president and vice president, respectively. The Japanese military administration was established in 1942, one day after its occupation or their occupation. Under a proclamation issued by the Japanese High Command, the sovereignty of the United States over the Philippines was terminated. The Japanese-sponsored Republic of the Philippines was inaugurated with Jose Laurel as president. From here on, you can research more about how our republic has turned out to be what it is now, starting with events like the martial law and the new republic. I think you also have uh, subjects in the past which tackled Philippine constitution and Philippine government. I hope you can read back throw back to your high school and then read history because a Spanish philosopher George Santayana said those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it thank you very much and uh, be safe